Peace be with you. All. In the greetings of Islam, we tell everybody it's also in Judaism, in Hebrew, Salam, Shalom, Peace. I just want to follow uh, with the uh, previous speaker talking about different uh, product, vegetables, weather, land, people, culture, traditions, and so on. In our holy book, the Quran, which we Muslims adhere and we believe and we memorize, it says, O oh mankind, we created you out of Adam and Eve, from man and woman. And we made you different people, different color, different cultures. And that's why we made you to know each other. That you approach the other side from other parts of the world, from other continent, other culture, and that's how we can identify ourselves. And also, in the holy book of Quran says any person, a human being, make any effort, even if it is small as an atom, good will see it, will be rewarded. And same thing if you do a bad thing, so tiny, you will see it. Sometimes it's also, it says when you do good, throw these things into the ocean. And didn't say you throw them in the river, because the river will take it away. But if you throw them in the ocean, the waves will bring it back to you. And so when you do get things, you will get them back somewhere, sometime, and if we don't expect it, it will be there. And therefore, all faith, all faiths preach goodness. Whether you go from Far east to far west, man came to create its own belief, culture, customs, to organize the community. Unfortunately, history told us that people suffered a lot through humanity, through faith. Lots of wars, lots of killing. And if we, we know that all faith preach good. And every religion tells you to be good with your neighbors, with your kids, with your grandparents, with all this. But some people, unfortunately, take their faith by their birth certificate. Not because of reaching, reading, educating, understanding. It's, it's in, the, in the birth certificate that you are Christians, Muslims, Jews, whatever. And then you might be the most ignorant person, but to do the one who holding the sword to defend that faith without background knowledge. And now what we see today, we always see a conflict caused by faith. When I was, probably was said that I am a Palestinian who was born in Palestine and probably some people still remember the name. It's in the Bible. And from childhood I became a refugee. The war was based on faith. Judaism, Islam, Christianity. And then I resort to a refugee camp established by the United Nations. And it happened that was a convoy of AIDS came through used uh, clothes and food to the refugees in the camps. And we got, among the things we get as a family, a coat. 
And in that quote was a few lines in a paper saying that those who could receive this, please write back. This is my address. I wrote back, and the man was from Abbotsford, a car dealer. We have to, a year later, he came to see me in the camp. Took all the way, and he brought a group of pilgrims to come to see Jerusalem, and I was there. I grew up. I went to the university in the, that person from Abbotsford was from the Mennonite Central Committee. I went to their university, didn't pay tuition, I graduated, my brothers graduated, my grandchildren graduated from the same university without paying any cent. When I got married, the man was with me, with his family, uh, and uh, my kids, I got kids, and then we went, I started working with the United Nations. And uh, the United Nations school, uh, one director from, we were in Austria, and one director from the TV wanted to have a, a Christmas carol to select the students from the international community. Went over there, and out of the 300 students, picked up my kids to sing the carol, Christmas carol. Oh, the kids came back and said, oh, they want to go to TV to sing Christmas. Good. That's the faith. We need to understand each other. And they said, yes, of course. And my kids were in the TV. Christmas time, Christmas evening, to sing Christmas Carol. So, a year later, I immigrated to Canada. I came to Canada, and I was giving a speech in the Rand House. I was talking about the conflict in the Middle East between Palestinians and Jews. And I was talking about that while I was working with the United Nations, I went to see my house, which we were kicked out in 1948. And when I went there, I saw, I came to the house and the man came from inside and said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I am looking. At the time I was with the United Nations, when you, with UN laissez passe I have the power of the UN behind me, and nobody could kick me, and so on. <laughs> so he said, I'll bring you the, the Israeli army to kick you out. And I said, fine, no problem. I have the UN, let's see, let's see. I'm protected. So I said, where do you live? He said, inside, here. I said, can I have a cup of coffee with you? He was going to call the police. And then I said, I want to have a cup of coffee with you. And he said, yes. <laughs> Change the whole thing. <laughs> we went inside. And we spoke frankly. He stood up and he praised me. And he said, I love you like my brother. And I would like to offer you the house if I can. Because I am paying rent and I can leave tomorrow. But it's politics. I was giving the speech in the roundhouse, and while we finished, a gentleman was walking around to talk to me, and I said, I, I noticed that. And I went, I said, you want to talk to me? He said, yes. And he said, that the man was your, my father. And we live here in North Vancouver. He told me about you, and he's proud that of your friendship with him. So the faith didn't stop in the front of us. We became brothers. But politics did. Today, we hear the news all the time about terrorism, conflicts, and so on. And faith has nothing to do with it. Only people who took the faith into their 
ideology, uh, their own goals, their own perspective to do whatever they want to do. But faith always preach good. And when I go to the prison, for those people who are in the prison, I say all the time, whatever you did, God will forgive you as long as you become honest, straightforward, and remorseful for whatever you did. And I always teach them how to, which is a mysterious thing, how to pray. The Muslims pray five times a day. And why we pray five times a day? Because in each pray, in each we pray uh, two rakas in the morning, four at noon, and four in the afternoon, and three in the evening, and four. So we pray many times. And every time we stand in front of God and pray, we say, ask for his mercy. We always do, we repeat that all the time. So a person who's doing that in intervals five times a day, and each time, maybe 20 times you repeat the same thing, should not commit any violence. Because he's seeking forgiveness, he's seeking mercy. And if you seek mercy and forgiveness, you seek it for yourself, for the people around you, for your neighbors, for everybody. But the people misunderstood. Because we must learn things from the media. And the media make it so excited that you can't read, exaggerate things. And take it from the content into where you can attract your attention to read and the exaggeration and so on. But the facts, completely we should learn by ourselves and to try to find the truth. Going through a refugee camp to university, to United Nations, to Canada, I feel that faith is a good, preach good for every, every human being. We're all created by the same God we all created to care for each other. And I would be, uh, if you allow me, I want to say a prayer, how we Muslims do these things. And you understand, when you see the people lining up, praying behind a, a leader who is called Imam, telling them what we say. It is not mysterious. We always call for his mercy. In the name of God, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, in the name of God, the most merciful, the most gracious. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the most merciful, the most gracious. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, I thank God for his giving things, blessing. Ar-Rahman al-Rahim, he owns everything. Ihdina Sirat al Mustaqim, tell us the right way, the right path. Sirat, those, the path with those who you, th you made them good, would like to follow them like the prophets, like the good people. And we don't want to be associated with those who went astray. We want to be good with those good people. And we ask you for your forgiveness. We repeat that, we repeat that, we repeat that. And we say, God is great, God is great, God is great, many times. And when we sit down on the floor, we make a blessing for Abraham, the forefather of all faith, the three faith, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. We say Abraham and his sons, grandsons, his and followers, as well as we as Muslims and Christians are the followers of Abraham. He was he had two wives, Sarah and Hajar. One is a Coptic and the other one is uh, supposed to be at the time uh, a Muslim before Judaism came in or created. And uh, the servant 
went to Mecca, and now where Muslims go to the house of Abraham. Mecca, we all the Muslims, the three millions go to the house of Abraham. It is the house which was built by Abraham, not by Muhammad, not by Jesus. Jesus didn't get there. He stayed in Jerusalem and Bethlehem. But Abraham is the one who left to Mecca, built it there, put his son Ishmael and his, wife and his mother there, and went back to the other wife. And now we go, we call the black stone. That black stone is the, the remnant of the house which was built by Abraham. That's the Kaaba. So all the three religions, the Christians are united with Abraham. We all should be brothers, should help each other, should we, our fathers is the one, the same one. And I am proud that been given the chance to talk to you and explain that we are Muslims at her, we cannot be Muslims unless we believe mm. in Judaism, in Christianity, and in Islam. We have to believe in all the prophets. We, I cannot be considered a Muslim if I don't believe in the prophets, which is from Adam to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, including Abraham, Isaac, Noah, Jesus, and so on. And no many, not many people know this. And we are the one that are supposed to be the last of faith who believes in all those prophets. And by this, I thank you so much for giving me the time.